السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله Praise be to Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth and blessings and peace unto the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Islam, the beautiful way of life the way of life that make you submit yourself to the creator of the heavens and the earth How can we perfect our submission to the creator of the heavens and the earth? It's all clear to us the Prophet, peace be upon him, he said, I left with you two things, that if you hold fast to it, you would never be led astray. The Quran, the words of the creator of the heavens and the earth, and my sunnah, my way, his teachings, his way of explaining the Quran. If you hold fast to these two things, revelation from the creator of the heavens and the earth, you would never be astray. What's in the Quran and the sunnah? What's in the Quran and the way of the life of Prophet Muhammad that would make the person steadfast, that would make the Muslim, the submitter to the creator of the heavens and the earth, it would make him steadfast on the truth. Islam has pillars. Islam has in its belief also pillars. We have a belief system. We have an action system. It's not just about belief in the heart. And once we believe in something in our hearts and that's it, we can live our life according to our own desires. This is not the case in Islam. You submit yourself in the perfect sense. So first, our belief has to be correct. We submitted ourselves, meaning that we worship none but the creator of the heavens and the earth. And this is what made us a Muslim. When we say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. No one is worthy of worship except Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth. And that Prophet Muhammad is the final messenger. Once we say this, we are Muslims then we get to know what are the pillars of faith, what are the things that we have to believe in. We believe in Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth. We believe in the hereafter, the day of judgment, and what comes after that. We believe in the books that God revealed to the different messengers. We believe in the angels. We believe in the Qadr, which is the destiny that Allah, the most merciful, had destined the lives of the people, and we believe in the messengers that God has sent to the human beings. If we take each and every one of these pillars in brief, and of course this is needs more details, but just very briefly, what is the belief in Allah? To believe that the creator is one, the provider, the sustainer, the one in his hands of life and death is only one. And to worship him alone. And the worship is anything that pleases the creator of the heavens and the earth, in the pillars of Al-Islam that will come, and we talk about it in actions, everything has to be for his sake only. Turning to him alone, not turning to an idol, or a stone, or a human being, but turning to the creator of the heavens and the earth, and worshipping him alone. And also it means the oneness in names and attributes of the creator of the heavens and the earth. That in the Quran, there are many names and attributes of the creator of the heavens and the earth. We believe in all of them. We have, they have meanings to it, and it's the perfect characteristics and attributes that we turn to the creator of the heavens and the earth alone in worshipping him with the belief and the sayings and acting according to these names and attributes. That he is the most merciful, which means what? It means that we need to subject ourselves to the mercy of the creator of the heavens and the earth. We have to have mercy towards one another. He is the most knowledgeable, that he knows everything. So that means a Muslim would never just do anything when he's alone of evil because he knows that the creator of the heavens and the earth is watching him. He knows everything. He's the all-powerful. So the hearts are attached to him alone. He's the ever-living. He is the most rich. So we seek the richness from him, whether it's physical richness or spiritual richness. And he is the most merciful, the most gracious, the all-hearer, the all-seer and the different names and attributes of Allah that we need to learn from the Quran and the way of the Prophet ﷺ. We believe in Allah, we believe in the hereafter, in the day of judgment, that the wisdom of the creator of the heavens and the earth is in such a way that we're not created for play, we're created for a great purpose and that is to worship him alone. And then after this life, after this test that we live and we experience and there is evil and there is good, then the day of judgment will come for the rewards to be given to the believers, those who submit themselves to the creator of the heavens and the earth, and for the punishment for those who disbelieved in the creator of the heavens and the earth. With all the details of the hereafter, 
This is something for us to learn. As a new Muslim, we need to learn these things. We have to learn these things and in details, as it's mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, it's not up to individuals to discuss matters of unseen. It's all based on revelation. And that's why the beauty of the religion of Islam, that everything is saved. The revelation is saved for us to learn and to educate ourselves. Believing in the angels, that they exist, and they are a magnificent creation of the creator of the heavens and the earth. That God created them from light, that they are so powerful. They have jobs that God entrusted them to do. They are in constant worship of the creator of the heavens and the earth. They don't have the choice that we have. They are in constant worship and praising the creator of the heavens and the earth. Among them is angel, Gabriel, the one that is responsible for sending the message to the prophets. There is the angel of his name, Mikael, in which he's responsible for the rain and the sustenance, and the angel of death, and many angels, and so on and so forth. So we believe in them. And we believe in the books that God revealed to the messengers, and one of which are the Psalms, and the Torah, and the Bible, and the Quran being the final message. The final message that God sent to the Prophet wasallam, peace be upon him, with the miraculous wordings of it, that challenges humanity to bring something the like of it, or even something like one chapter of it, and they could not be able to get something like it, with its perfect rulings and way of life that is explained in very details in the Quran. So we believe in other books. But these previous books before the Quran, the human being was entrusted to take care of it. But changes occurred when it comes to these books. But with the Quran, God promised, Allah promised to save it. And that's why it's saved with every letter of it 1400 years ago. And then we believe in the messengers, that God sent messengers, that the human beings are in need of messengers for the messengers to show the human beings to worship the creator of the heavens and the earth alone and for the human being to have an example, a role model for them to follow. Some people might say, why didn't God just send an angel? If it was an angel, the matter would be all over. There's no need for the test. People would see the angels. People would say, well, these are angels. How can, you, how can we follow their examples? But he sent human beings, flesh and blood, they have the same desires as all, as all human beings. But they were different in the sense that they received revelations from Allah and Allah perfected their way of life for us to see and to imitate their way of life. And the most of all these messengers, the only one that whole, his whole entire life has been saved for us as if he is living among us is Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That everything is saved about his life. How did he believe in the creator of the heavens and the earth? How did he worship the creator of the heavens and the earth? In the perfect sense, how did he give charity? How did he, or the manners that he had, how did he eat and drink? How did he even go to the bathroom to relieve himself? Everything is there. How did he deal with women, with men, with neighbors? Everything is there for us to learn how to live our life in the most perfect way. And he was a human being that got married, and have children for the husband to know how to be a husband and for a for a father to be how to be a father and for the wives to be how to be wives and for the girls how to be girls and so on with the perfect role model that is being explained and shown in the life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so messengers their message to be conveyed to the people and for us to follow the way of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and to believe in the destiny that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most knowledgeable and everything is destined for the person. So as a result of that, we would have our heart in state of tranquility. That we know that nothing happens by itself like this by chance. It happens by the most wise. So that's why we do two things with regarding to the destiny of the creator of the heavens and the earth. One, before anything happens, we put our trust in Allah. We put our trust in the creator of the heavens and the earth. We take all the physical means that is permissible for us to take according to what's in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And once something evil happens or something that we don't like to happen, happen to us, immediately after that, we are in state of being pleased with the destiny of Allah. Because it comes from the most wise and we did our best and we know that everything is by his wisdom. So we turn to him alone with patience, with seeking his pleasure alone and this is pillars of faith 
things that are unseen to us, but we believe in it. In Allah, in the creator of the heavens and the earth, in the hereafter, in the angels, in the books, in the messengers, in the destiny, which is the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I said it very briefly, but it's our job to learn these pillars in details. And we can read and learn from the scholars of the religion of Islam how to believe in them in the more detailed, in a more detailed manner. Then we come to the actions. And this, of course, of what he said is actions too. But the actions meaning the five pillars of Islam. First one, when we said, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. That there's no one worthy of worship except Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth. And we talked about that in the belief in Allah. And that Prophet Muhammad is the final messenger. What does that mean? It means that the only way that we can seek the pleasure of Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth, is to be behind the Prophet, peace be upon him. He's the first one to enter Jannah, to enter paradise in the day of judgment, and people will be behind him. The way they were behind him in this life, meaning follow his path, following his path, the way it will be in the hereafter by entering the paradise that Allah created for the believers. So we follow him in his belief, in his actions, in his worship, in his manners, in everything of what he taught the believers to do. So this is the first pillar. And from this first pillar, we get to learn how to be sincere because we do the acts of worship only for the sake of Allah. And the second condition is that we follow the way of the Prophet Sallallahu And that's why any action, take it as a rule, any action for it to be accepted by the creator of the heavens and the earth, it has to fulfill these two conditions. It has to be sincerely for the sake of Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth, not for the sake of another human being. And the second condition that it has to be according to the way, to the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which entitles on us to purify our hearts, to make it sincerely for the sake of Allah, and also encourages us to seek knowledge, to know what is the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We should not take it for granted that we imitate others blindly when it comes to the religion of Islam. If you are a new Muslim, be careful. Make your goal is to follow the way of the Prophet and it's all saved. How can you find this? By the scholars of the religion, they teach people how to imitate the Prophet, peace be upon him, and not to imitate another human being, but to imitate the Prophet of Allah, Prophet Muhammad in everything. If you're about to learn how to pray, Learn how the Prophet, peace be upon him, prayed and how every move he did. And this religion, be content, it's been saved in every single detail of it. So we just need to have the knowledge to learn the way of the Prophet, peace be upon him. And then once we know it, then we should have the courage to apply it and the patience to apply these acts of worship. So this is the first pillar of Al-Islam. The second pillar of Al-Islam is Salah, is prayers. It is not just belief in the heart. You have to have this connection with the creator of the heavens and the earth. Since our purpose is to live our life according to what he wants from us, the worship, five daily prayers. And by the mercy of Allah is not 50. It's only five. Five prayers throughout the day and the night, morning, in the noon, in the afternoon, at sunset, at nighttime, with very prescribed and precise way of knowing what is the beginning of every time and this is for you to learn and to go and to to go to the mosques to the islamic centers and to learn how to perform the salah in the perfect way we have to be in state of purity we learn how to purify ourselves purifying our hearts with to be away from associating partners with allah to purify it from envy from bad feelings and things of that nature and to physically be pure when we make wudu ablution we wash our hands and face and arms and feet for us to be ready in such a state to stand and to say Allahu Akbar, which means Allah is the greatest. And then we start making our act of worship, the beautiful moments throughout the day and the night. There's nothing more beautiful than taking time out of the busy life to turn to the creator of the heavens and the earth alone and to have this one-on-one, -on -one, making dhikr, making remembrance of the creator of the heavens and the earth, asking him, and he responds to us as the Prophet Sallallahu said. He responds to us. If you say praise be to Allah when you say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen in the first chapter of the Quran which is a pillar in every unit of the Salah, he would respond to you. And he would say my slave, my servant had praised me. And then when you ask from him, he would grant you what you asked for. So it's such a precious moment in our day and night in which we stand 
we bow and we prostrate, we put our head, the most honorable part of our body on the floor. For who? For the creator of the heavens and the earth. Not to, not to a human being, but for the creator of the heavens and the earth. Moments of joy. That's why the Prophet used to say that the prayers is made for me the joy of my eyes. It's the joy of this life. So we make the five daily prayers in the most perfect way. In the houses of Allah, if we can, in the, in the mosques, for men and women, for women to do it at home and for the men to go to the mosque to perform the daily prayers and to learn. And it's a learning process. And then the third pillar, fasting the month of Ramadan. One month in the whole year, the month of Ramadan, 30 days or 29 days, depending on the moon. We fast the whole month from Fajr time for dawn to sunset in a very precise, precise timing. And we abstain from eating and drinking and sexual relations. For what purpose? To punish our own selves? No. But this human being, God created us in such a way that we have to keep struggling with ourselves to elevate it, to elevate our souls, to be able to be in control over our, over our own selves. A, a Muslim, someone that submitted to the creator of the heavens and the earth, he's not weak anymore. He cannot say, I cannot do it when it comes to something that is good. We have the power to do things by the will of Allah, by the will of the creator of the heavens and the earth. And that's why we train ourselves with something like fasting. If we can abstain from the necessities of our lives, eating and drinking and sexual relations with our wives, then that means we are able to be away from evil things. And we do this throughout the month of Ramadan and with prayers and reciting the Quran. It's blessed month that is charging for the Muslim throughout the whole year. So this is a third pillar of Al Islam. Pillar that means it has to be done. Any building, any uh, thing cannot be sustained unless its pillars are clear and firm. Fourth pillar, very briefly, is the zakah. Zakah means purification of the soul. What does that mean? Obligatory charity. And that's what charity does to our soul. When we do the charity, when we give the charity for the sake of Allah, it's an obligation. And it's not for everyone, but for those who are considered in the religion of Islam as rich. Who are they? Those who have money that is saved. Saved throughout a whole year lunar calendar wise and this money has a minimum amount of it if it goes below this minimum amount then a person does not have to pay nothing but if it's over or the same of this minimum amount then the person has to give only 2.5 percent of what he or she had saved so if a person making a million dollar a year and he spends all the million dollar throughout the year there's no obligatory charity for him or her but if he's saving something and the minimum is, is around $1,000, it's based on gold, 70 grams of gold, whatever it's equal to in monetary value, and it's saved throughout the year. And we need to learn the, 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 the specifications of this is very briefly just to mention the rulings of the zakat, the obligatory charity. You need to ask someone of knowledge of your specific case how to give the zakat. It's such an important thing. And it's usually, it was in the past, in the early generations of Islam, that it's the duty of a Muslim government to do this, to collect this from the people. Very small amount of money that it goes to the poor and the needy and those who are in need in a specific categories that is mentioned. Obligatory charity, that it's enough for a whole society to be saved from poverty and what comes as a result of poverty. I'm not saying this from my own words. This is something that was applied and this is the beauty of this religion. The beauty of this religion is that it was applied at the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, early generations of Islam and after that. And when it was applied in its perfect way, humanity was happy. People under the rule of the Muslims were joying and having joy and happiness because justice was served. There was no poor at a moment, at a time in which when the Muslims were collecting the zakat, the obligatory charity, and helping the poor, there was no such a thing as poverty throughout the land of the Muslims from Morocco in the west all the way to, to China in the east. Anybody that wants to get married, they would give him. And there was still money. Anyone that wants to pay their loans, they would pay their loans because the money has to be spent for the affairs of the Muslims. But each and every one of us still has to pay the zakat, the obligatory charity for those who are needy. And the fifth pillar is Hajj. Hajj means pilgrimage. 
seeking a place, going to a place once in lifetime. Once in lifetime, and that is in Mecca, the first house of worship ever built, built by Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him. And the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, strengthening the fact of this act of worship, that it's an incumbent, an obligation on every Muslim, men and women, to go once in lifetime, if they have the means to do so, the physical means and the wealth for them to go to Mecca and to do certain rituals that Abraham, peace be upon him, he's the one that initiated it. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he taught his people the true way of Abraham, peace be upon him, and how he made Hajj or pilgrimage. Pilgrimage, actually, it sums all the different pillars of Islam. It's such a journey that purifies the soul, that all people are men, they look the same, they wear or they wrap around themselves two white sheets to give the sense that this is like the day of judgment. There's no difference between rich and poor in this beautiful journey. And also women, when they go, they perform hajj, and they make their prayers, and they give charity, and they go from one place to the other as an obedient servant to the creator of the heavens and the earth. They don't say, why we're going from this place to the other place. We're just going from one place to the other in rituals of Hajj, because this is the order of the Creator. So we get to learn how to submit ourselves and to have this perfect submission, not to a human being, but to the Creator of the heavens and the earth, the most merciful, the most just. So this is only done once in lifetime. It's only obligation, once in lifetime. And these are the five pillars of Al-Islam. If this is the whole religion of Al-Islam, there is something even more details than this. There's another level and that's the level of Al-Ihsan. Al-Ihsan to be a good doer. To worship the creator of the heavens and the earth as if you are seeing him. And if you cannot see him in this life, which is the case, only the believers would see him in the hereafter, then know for sure that he is watching you. And this is a higher level also that we need to attain. And then we learn how to have manners. How to have manners with other individuals in our life. How to have manners with our own selves. How to be watchful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the main important thing in our life is the tawheed. Is the oneness of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To purify ourselves from associating partners with Allah. To turn to the creator of the heavens and the earth. And to learn. This religion encourages every one of us to learn the truth. And to hold fast to the truth. And not just to blind follow anyone. But to learn the truth. To learn the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to follow the footsteps of the best generation ever brought to mankind, companions of the Allah anhum, early generations of Islam that Allah was pleased with them, and then we will have the success in this life and in the hereafter. There are more details, but hopefully you would learn from the Deen show, from anything that you would read from authentic sources, and learn the Deen of Islam and live the beauty of this religion. And the more days passes, the more we enjoy this religion, this perfect life of Islam, and that's why every day we are more than the day before. We're increasing in our Iman, in our faith, because it goes up and goes down, does not stand still. So we ask the Creator of the heavens and the earth, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us and to make us steadfast, and to make us among the knowledgeable ones, those who would be steadfast on the Sunnah, on the way of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته